Amen. And with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, Look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say to you, Look, there it is, or here he is. Do not go off, do not run in pursuit, for just as lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first, he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Today, the church celebrates the feast day of St. Josephat, who carries the title, the Martyr for Unity. He, growing up in Poland, recognized that there was a great deal of turmoil between the Eastern Rite and the Latin Rite churches. They would fight with each other about the way in which they celebrated Mass, the kind of you know, day-to-day practical things about the celebration of Mass, even some finer theological points, they would often be in contention with one another. And St. Josephat could have looked at this whole, you know, kind of fighting in Poland and said, you know, they are beyond reconciliation. They're not going to ever cooperate with one another. But instead, he decided to put his life's work into trying to bring these groups together. And as such, he you know, really followed a principle of trying to identify the best persons and the best qualities of both groups to try to bring them together with some sense of unity. And so he went about throughout his whole life becoming first a monk and then a priest known for his incredible preaching for many years until he was then eventually made a bishop at a rather young age because he was known to be a figure of reconciliation between these groups and you know sadly there are some persons that even though you can you know put all this incredible work and effort into it some people are still you know resistant to that unity some people still see those those figureheads you know as a you know as having ulterior motives or something else and so sadly when bishop josephat you know had returned back to poland another priest was sent in to just kind of stir up the pot, really to just kind of stir up some trouble. And as such, this Bishop Josephat had this priest uh, removed from his priestly duties and set, you know, kind of in time out for a little while until he can be, you know, uh, you know kind of more um, evenly keeled or evenly minded. And as such, there was a riot that broke out and sadly, you know, the opposing side based on just rumors and, you know, real no founded evidence, you know, that other riot came and killed St. Josephat and threw him into the river in a kind of mockery way. He had a stone tied around his neck and was thrown into the sea as a mockery of our Lord's words when he said, anyone that would lead one of these little ones astray, it would be better for them to have a millstone around their neck and tossed into the sea. It was a kind of mockery against St. Josephat, and it was a really sad occasion. He, he was willing to put his life on the, on the line in so many different ways as a way of trying to bring together these Christian uh, groups, to try to bring about some kind of reconciliation. And it's a difficult work, I think. It's a difficult work to bring together even different groups in our church today. They have different opinions about how the Mass ought to be celebrated, and how we ought about to go forward with evangelization and you know all the kind of finer points of our church's life. However, it is worth working for that unity. It is worth trying to bring together these different groups within the church so that it may come out on the other side much stronger because of it. If St. Joseph had, had looked at these different warring rights between the church and had just abandoned it at the beginning, things would have been far worse off had he not put his life and sacrificed his life for it. So too with us, 
It is worth that effort to try to bring together different, you know, different uh, kind of groups or cliques in our church, I, I suppose, to try to bring about a greater strength and unity so that we can go into the world and still stand strong against so many different forces that would see the church rather break apart. God bless all of you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Most merciful God, 
pour out your blessing upon these offerings and confirm us in the faith of, that St. Joseph had professed by the shedding of his blood through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all that we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, Robert, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, Lord, your servants, Dorothy Durfee and Quibble Nunez, for whom this Mass is being offered, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Josephat, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. At this time, we'll offer a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 
the body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. May this heavenly table, O Lord, bestow on us a spirit of fortitude and peace, so that following St. Joseph's example, we may willingly spend our lives working for the honor and unity of the Church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.